guys, it's Haley from OneOnRabbits.com and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about rabbit enrichment. Enrichment is extremely important for all animals in captivity. Whether those animals are in a zoo, a rehabilitation center, a sanctuary, or even just our domesticated pets in our homes. So why is enrichment so important? Animals who have good mental health have been found to engage with their environment more, be less aggressive, less fearful, explore more, and are more at ease with their surroundings. Enrichment is a powerful tool to promote positive mental health in animals in captivity. It also encourages them to use natural behaviors. Enrichment creates choice for animals and helps them to feel more control over their environment. It provides variety in their life and helps prevent boredom and increase overall happiness. Environmental enrichment is defined by the Library of Congress as enhancing the environment of confined animals in order to encourage natural behaviors and improve their quality of life. Kreger, 1999. There have been many research studies done on animals who are in captivity, and all of them have proven that it enhances an animal's life. So what exactly is enrichment? Wildwelfare.org says, an enriched environment should promote a range of normal behaviors that an animal finds rewarding, as well as allowing animals to positively respond to potential stressors. There are five different types of enrichment for animals. Social, cognitive, physical habitat, sensory, and food. In this video, I'm gonna take you through each type of enrichment to help you learn how to provide enrichment to your rabbit. The first one we're gonna be talking about is social enrichment. Social enrichment is anything that involves social interactions. Oftentimes for animals, this means living with other animals. Depending on the animal, this could be living with the same species or living with other species that coexist well. Obviously with rabbits, it would just be with rabbits, <laughs> as rabbits should not be housed with any other species. It can also include things like people or stuffed animals for some species. So what does this mean for rabbits? To provide proper social enrichment to rabbits, it is extremely important that your rabbit be bonded with other bunnies. Our domesticated rabbits come from the European rabbit, which live in groups of complex burrow systems called warrens. As pet owners, we need to be providing that proper social enrichment to our pet rabbits as it is vital for their mental health and well-being. The only rare cases that rabbits should be housed alone is in the rare situation that they have some sort of illness that is extremely contagious and deadly to other rabbits, or if they have some sort of condition that would make it extremely dangerous for them to go through the bonding process or be bonded with another rabbit. If your rabbit has an illness or a disability, please speak to your veterinarian and ask their advice if they think it would be safe whether your rabbit is bonded or not. Another important aspect of social enrichment is interacting with your rabbit yourself. The type of interaction you will give will be dependent on your rabbit's personality, wants, and needs. Some rabbits love to be pet next to you on the floor, and that is a great way to interact with your rabbit. But other rabbits may not enjoy being pet by humans, and in that part, they may just enjoy you just sitting on the floor next to them and letting them explore around you, on top of you, and just being in your presence. Some rabbits can also greatly benefit from the Snugabun bed, which is a bed that I have on the on my online shop if you guys are interested. This bed mimics two rabbits snuggling a rabbit and it creates a really nice, comfortable place for them to lay and it provides that social feeling of being snuggled next to different rabbits. Obviously this does not replace the need for your rabbit to be bonded, but it just provides an extra little social interaction that you can provide in your rabbit's area. This is great for rabbits who live in groups when some rabbits are just not really feeling like snuggling at that particular point in time. So the other rabbit can go and lay in one of these beds and still get that feeling because we all know our rabbits get grumpy and want their own space every once in a while. I've seen it plenty of times. For these next types of enrichment, I'm going to be discussing them together as they do tend to overlap a little bit. So here are the description of each of them. First is cognitive enrichment. Cognitive enrichment is anything that is new, challenging, or will make the animal think. That can be things like food, solving puzzles, or even training sessions. The other type of enrichment I will be talking about in this section is food enrichment. Food enrichment involves new foods or new ways an animal can get to the food. 
It can be presented in a way to encourage foraging behaviors or in a way for an animal to search for food. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we can provide cognitive and food enrichment to your rabbit. For rabbits, there is a variety of way to fulfill this type of enrichment. One of those ways is through clicker training. Clicker training is a good way to provide cognitive enrichment and get your rabbit thinking. It is also a great form of bonding with your rabbit. Foraging is another great way to provide enrichment for your rabbit, as this is how they would naturally gather their food in the wild. There are multiple ways to provide foraging activities to your rabbit. One way is to use a snuffle mat like the hide and seek mat made by Oxbow. We do have this available on our online shop. Snuffle mats encourage searching and foraging for treats and herbs, and this is a great way to provide that foraging experience. Another activity you could do is scatter feeding. You can scatter feed their daily veggies to encourage movement and enrichment. This is a great way to increase movement while eating, as well as helping food aggression in bonded rabbits. You can also scatter feed treats like 100% grass hay treats. I sell these on my online shop as well. They're just little pellets that are 100% hay, no other ingredient. I love these for scatter feeding. Another way is doing hay baskets. This is one of my favorites. You can provide new places to provide hay to your rabbit by using different baskets, bowls, or other items. This helps provide a lot of enrichment. You can also make it more enriching by giving different varieties of hay, or sprinkling herbs inside, or even little treats. Another thing you could try is hiding treats and hay inside of the Timothy Hay Tunnel by Oxbow. This is very similar to like a toilet paper tube or something. I just prefer this because, I don't know, I just find it weird to use toilet paper tubes. You can also do a very similar thing in a paper lunch bag by stuffing it full of hay, herbs, treats, and they have to shred it apart to get the stuff inside. And last but not least, providing a varied diet. A varied diet can provide a lot of enrichment for your rabbit. You can do this by feeding at least three or more different types of veggies each week and rotating them weekly. This can be challenging for some rabbits who are more picky, um, ebony. <laughs> so some rabbits may not allow you to provide a big variety as they simply just won't eat it. But this is why there's so many different types of enrichment as some rabbits will have favorite types of enrichment over others and you can pick and choose what works great for your rabbit. Another thing you could try is also providing multiple different types of hay by rotating the type of hay you use as their treat hay in their little baskets and also providing a variety of different types of treats, uh, different types of fruits to give them. Obviously feed treats in limited amounts and they should only have about one teaspoon for every two pounds of body weight, but this is a great way to provide different tastes and textures to your rabbits. The next two enrichment categories I will be talking about are physical habitat enrichment and sensory enrichment. Physical habitat enrichment is a habitat that provides more dynamic, promotes comfortability, and promotes fun. You want to mimic a habitat that they would have naturally in the wild. Sensory enrichment is anything that stimulates a rabbit's senses. This can be different smells, textures, sounds, or movement. Providing sensory and physical habitat enrichment is extremely important to rabbits. We can do this by providing an enriched habitat for them. And here are a few ways we can do that. Hiding. Rabbits are prey animals and naturally live in complex tunnels underground called warrens. We can mimic that in our homes by providing different hidey houses and tunnels for our rabbits. Specifically, the maze haven mimics a complex burrow system in rabbits. The tunnel haven is also a great big tunnel for rabbits and both are available on my online shop if you guys are interested, but these are definitely some of my favorites. Digging is another very important thing for rabbits. Because they dig burrows underground in the wild, digging is a natural instinctual behavior for them. We can provide outlets for digging such as diggy boxes or different mats and textures to dig on. The double woven seagrass mat and Timothy mats that I have on my online shop are great options for this. Sterling and Ebony love to use these to dig on and shred and just do whatever with. Chewing is also a vital enrichment for rabbits. Rabbits explore the world using their teeth and they love to bite and chew things. I mean, if you have a rabbit, you already know this. <laughs> we can help provide outlets for this by using toys. 
You can keep different sticks, such as apple sticks or willow sticks in your rabbit's habitats. Also, plain untreated pine wood and cardboard are also really great chews. Some really special chew toys that my rabbits love are willow balls, willow rings, willow baskets, basically anything willow. <laughs> my rabbits go crazy for these. Also fruit flavored balsa wood and flings and fruit flavored loofah. Since these items are normally eaten within a day if given the chance, sometimes I allow short spurts of chewing for special toys where I let them chew for just 15 to 30 minute periods. That way the toy can last longer as some of these more really tasty chews can be a little bit more on the pricey end and you also don't want your rabbit sitting and eating a bunch of like fruit flavored things all day long. So it's good to just provide them in short little bursts so that you, they still get that that really good enrichment in, but you're also not spending like loads of money on a bunch of toys. But I do like to keep a couple toys like always in their habitat that they can chew on throughout the day, things that are easier to come by and that will still provide that enriching chewing experience. So I've always had pine wood because the rabbit's habitat is made out of pine wood. So the rabbits eat like the trim on my walls, the trim are all untreated pine. And then I also like to provide willow sticks, apple sticks, and then like different grass mats and things for them to chew on throughout the day. Exploring is also another vital part of enrichment that provides vital exercise to your rabbit. I like making playtime interesting by rotating different toys and hideouts or by using different spaces in my home for free time. So I hope you guys learned some new ways to provide enrichment for your rabbits. All animals deserve enrichment and it is a vitally important aspect of owning animals. If you are looking for some good enrichment toys, mats, chews, hidey houses, anything like that, you guys can feel free to check out my online store. I will have it linked up in the iCard down in the description, um, but it's also just 101rabbits.com if you guys are interested. You can stock up on basically any enrichment essentials there as everything in my store is basically enriching for rabbits as that is one of my main goals when creating my shop. But anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful, and learned something new, and I will see you guys very soon on a new video. Bye!